Hello, welcome to Starlight Talks. I'm here with Kevin, and we're going to talk about asexuality this week. Um, check out our website because we have all these cool new events coming up. Um, so check out artism.com and hit, hit that calendar and register for um, the women's support group, the adult support group, and all our social events, and the parent coffee. And then also coming up next weekend, there's a workshop called What We Wish Our Parents Did Differently with Danny Rady from Asperger Experts. And there's a viewing of Everything's Gonna Be Okay with some special guests, a panel of Q&A. So go register for all of those cool things coming up. Hey Lillian, thanks for joining. Um, and to repeat, I'm here this week with Kevin. We're going to talk about asexuality. Oh, and I have a new blog post where I wrote about perspective. So check that out on the artism.com. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. We love to interact with you guys. So feel free to leave them whenever you feel like questions, comments related to the topic or not, <laughs> we'll get to as much as we can. Hi. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, and say hi if you're watching, and we'll shout out your name. <laughs> we'll say hi to you. Yeah. So, Kevin, you want to introduce yourself? Okay, sure. Um, so I found out about my orientation pretty recently, just um, uh, 2018. Um, and I assumed I was just a normal straight person because um, we'll talk about various forms of attraction, but um, I had ex experienced some forms of attraction towards women, uh, but I never wanted to date them because that seemed really weird and unnatural for me to do. Um, like I thought that it was just like wanting to be close to them was what other people experienced too, but there was a whole other aspect that I wasn't experiencing and it was very confusing figuring this out. And I didn't even know about the orientation until 2018. So I went through most of my life having no idea about it. And uh, I think just in general, there's not too much information about it. So I think it's, uh, that's one of the reasons why we're talking about it. So there's more information out there for people to understand yeah. it better. Yeah, so if you're watching and you relate to these things, maybe you look into it. Um, yeah, I, I felt the same, especially like with the diagnosis of autism, everything seemed to always be autism is the reason you feel this way. Um, and so I sort of got that mentality that I, um, like, there's like something, um, I remember being told that like we develop like five years um after everyone else socially and, and in different ways. Um, and so like there's a lot of stuff like that where, it's like, where I didn't connect uh, that a lot of things that I was going through were not related to autism. So I thought like I wasn't interested um, in dating maybe because I sensory wise, I don't like skin on skin contact and all those kind of things related to autism and socializing was hard enough with just friendship um, that going further might be like um, overwhelming in different ways where um, um, it was actually because I just didn't want to go further and it wasn't something like that I like on my mind ever I didn't realize that people thought about sex way more than I did um but if I did it was like well maybe because they're developed they're developing faster or maybe like they're I always put a different reason maybe it's because of my autism maybe because of this and then when I looked into like there's different orientations and one of them being asexuality was like oh, maybe it's actually that um and I just 
the more I found out about the ace community, the more I was like, that's definitely what it is. Um, and yeah, so there, I agree that more information needs to be spread on the topic. Um, and I thought it would be a great thing to talk about this week because, especially because there's such a, a myth that those of us with autism don't engage in sex, um, which is not true. And I actually found that those of us who are ace and autistic are pretty rare. <laughs> um, just like ace in general is pretty rare. <laughs> um, and I guess also there could be a myth um, about how autistic people don't really care about their relationships too right. much or like yeah. that just relate connecting to people is not that important, right. which is absolutely false. And that's uh, also kind of like how you're talking about your own confusion. That yeah. was, so that was some of the confusion I went through too. Um, I thought, oh, maybe I'm afraid of commitment. Maybe I haven't found the right person yet. Uh, I'm just, I guess I'm, I'm just not that interested in that type of thing. Maybe I'm just, I guess an, another way I would word it is I thought other people were like kind of reckless, like their behavior with how much they would commit to certain people, mm -hmm. even despite not knowing them that well. I always found that very odd and kind of irrational behavior. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm just, I'm more cautious. Like I'm just gonna, I have to wait to get to know people better before I can fully be romantically interested yeah. in them. And like I've been alive long enough that it hasn't happened yet um, and that's uh, I actually had also had a friend who is um, he's ace and he introduced it to me and he uh, I just talked about my uh, my perspectives on romance just like what's the big deal I don't know why I'm supposed to want this and then he said oh you might be ace and like just for anyone out there who might actually be ace and not know it um, looking into that type of thing was pretty life-changing. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of these things I never even thought I related to, I ended up relating to. And it was, like I said, mm -hmm. it was really big discovery. Yeah, and um, if we cover like early life, like a lot of the stuff that I thought was related to autism, like not understanding social cues, there was even more to that of like, I didn't understand romance and sex and like those sort of feelings because I had never experienced them. Um, like I didn't understand the word crush or the word sexy. Um, and so when people would use those, I, I assumed I knew what they were, but I didn't actually know what they were. So I definitely used them incorrectly all the time. Um, and then when I realized I was using them incorrectly, I thought it was because of autism, <laughs> not because of I wasn't experiencing those feelings. Um, and the way I like to explain it is it's like hard to prove a negative. People are like, oh, if you don't feel it, then how is it not obvious? It's like not like people go years without being diagnosed with being deaf or like, um, I didn't know I couldn't smell for years because it's so hard to prove a negative. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so this is like when people ask you like about your sexuality and that kind of thing, it's um, it's hard to prove you don't have it when everyone is like talking about um, all these different feelings. You're like, yeah, I probably feel that, but you feel it differently. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, you can't know exactly how you feel it versus someone yeah. else. And uh, just like having a romantic drive, romantic drive is just considered to be such a standard, like everyone's supposed to want this. Yeah. So like, uh, just the thought of even questioning it at all is like not something that comes up often. Mm -hmm. And like that's what we ended up having to do. We had to question it. Yeah. Uh, but it's not like a given that we would just do that. So, um... I think I discovered um, the word asexual sometime in in college. Um, I like I, I as a writer, I did a lot of research into um, all different kinds of people, not just like neurotypes or sexualities and all different things that I came across asexual, but I didn't like connect to it for 
a, even a while after learning the term. Um, uh, cause I think my assumption was that, um, more on the way on the side of liking, um, everyone equally. <laughs> um, and, and for me, like that made sense for a while, but, um, I never had like the urge to like date anyone or do anything um, besides like when I just when I met someone I always was like thinking about oh do I want to be friends with them or not where I realized that most people actually were thinking about rom romance and dating you know like would this person fit um, in my life in that way where I was like oh is this would this be a fun person to hang out with was more of my thought process um so when also when you're not thinking about that area a lot like that or thinking about like what my orientation was also wasn't important to me for a long time so i was like i just like people is kind of how i answered that kind of, that question um uh and then once like I figured it out that I was ace. That was like super helpful in explaining things. Um, yes, yeah, so that that is kind of my journey with that. Um, I don't think we ever like. I think we should define ace a little bit because I think we just jumped into it. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> That'd be helpful. Um, so, like, I know the the dictionary definition is not um wanting to engage in sexual activities um uh, like that would be the, like the basic definition but there's also like a spectrum of like people who are ace do get into relationships and do have sex so like, we'll get into all that later but um but yeah that's like the basic definition of of aces like we don't have we don't think about sex as much or not at all as compared to other people and we don't get like the same feelings about sex or being horny or like those kind of feelings other people get yeah and um this is also something that i think made it very confusing uh and possibly for a certain people that have this orientation so for most people, their sexual orientation and their romantic orientation are the exact same thing. Like mm -hmm. vast majority of people like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's something, so romantic orientation doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the same mm -hmm. thing as a sexual orientation. Um, and that can be confusing to certain people that are looking into it because maybe they are a, or probably one of the more common ones is they're asexual but have a romantic drive. So they'll be involved with someone romantically, but maybe not have like the same type of physical pleasures mm -hmm. or desire to engage in those things. Um, and there's a question here. The question is. Um, yeah, Alex asked, my question is, do you think the reason autistic people seem to be more likely to identify with things like ace or non-binary related to the fact that we are less likely to go along with what society tells us is normal and expected? Um, I don't agree that most people with autism um, are, uh, identify with ACE, but I do think we, we definitely, um, as a community, have way more um, of those who are gender non-binary and definitely um, identify somewhere with the LGBTQ community. Um, and because of like some of the reasons you explained, like we, like, Starting off very young, we don't see social norms um, the way other people do, and we do, we like think they're ridiculous when we learn this. <laughs> and so, very quickly, I think we identify with that kind of um, outside the norm kind of gender ideas and. Um, um, sexualities and all different kinds of things. I think we're very open as a community with 
having friends who are like outside of our grade on age and gender and also having relationships like that um, more so than the neurotypicals because we don't see those social boundaries that most people see. So I agree with that. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that leads to most people assuming they're ace, though. I think that um, that's why we're here to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, I'm not confident on this. I'm pretty sure I read a study that uh, people on the spectrum are statistically more likely to be uh, a non-standard orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that could explain some of it, too. But I think there's definitely more to it than that yeah like what what was just explained I think is a lot of detail on how other ways that autistic people could relate to these uh, mm -hmm. these communities um, and I think like we're very accepting of differences as well so um, so we're comfortable like with within the autism community of, of that kind of stuff um so yeah thank you for your question alex um hi marilyn thank you for joining um if you're just joining us we're talking about asexuality and autism this is my guest kevin this week um yeah um one of the the things that really helped me when i was doing research for for this episode was finding out that there's different forms of attraction where like I remember saying like I like um, red hair or I like you know this kind of look and people would assume when I was saying that especially if I was saying it about a particular person they assume I have a crush on them or wanted to date them or um, something along those lines and I found out that there's different forms of uh, attraction. There's the uh, aesthetic attraction, which is probably what I was feeling, which is like, like looking at a, like a painting and <laughs> being like, wow, that looks really cool. That person has really beautiful red hair <laughs> and that's it. There's no like wanting to touch them or have sex with them or be in a relationship with them. It's just like, I like looking at that because <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, and the positive yeah. emotions associated yeah. with what you're looking at yeah. can affect your interaction with that. Yeah. Um, um, even if it's not necessarily. For yeah, it can make. Reasons. Yeah, it can make you smile and like feel warm and all of those kind of things. Like looking at you just said you said like looking at a puppy makes you warm, but you don't yeah. want to like. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, that, 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 got into a, that was good. Yeah. Kind of messed up con. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, it's like those kind of feelings. And then there's the sens sensual, I can't say that word, <laughs> attraction where like you don't necessarily want to have sex with them, but you want to touch them or hold hands with them, do something along those, cuddle, do something along those lines. Um, and then there's the romantic attraction of like wanting to go on a date and wanting to like build some sort of relationship and then there's the sexual attraction of like obviously wanting to have sex and so those of us who are ace may feel like one or two of those things at a time it's very rare we feel all of them or if we feel them all of them at all where like most people seem to feel all of that at the same time and that was something i didn't realize when um, people who were saying they had crushes on someone or they were attracted, that they were feeling those kind of things where I assumed attraction was like, oh, I like looking at that from afar. <laughs> um, and, and so I would compliment people and they thought I was flirting and I didn't know <laughs> that you um, saying those kind of things meant more. <laughs> than what, um, what I felt. And so that, that was part of being ace. That also I thought was part of being autistic. Of like, oh, I just don't understand the social norms. Like, what is, I don't know what flirting is. <laughs> no, I, I still don't. 
And uh, just to uh, mention Alex, uh, his content, I mean, comment, sorry. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's possibly true because if you're just, if you don't, uh, if you don't follow what's normal already, like you're more comfortable admitting you're something that's not normal. So I think that is very possible too. Yeah. Um, he says, well, my point is that neurotypical people might be ace or non, non-binary and binary at the same rate, but less likely to acknowledge it, which yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, or they might not even know to think about it, to question it. Um, Cause we like to question things in the <laughs> autistic community. community. Um, so, um, so that's very true. Um, and, and another one of those um, stereotypes that we have is that we are like not as um, emotional as the um, neurotypical community that we're more logical thinking and we're more, um, and the the mean way of saying it is cold hearted, <laughs> and so um, all of that I think also um, kept me from thinking about being ace because it's like oh I just don't think of things as emotionally as other people, or like they would like jump into um, say oh I like the way that person looks I really want to date them and I'm like that's a huge leap from <laughs> just seeing them across the room <laughs> um, and I thought maybe oh it's because they're not autistic that they're doing that um, instead of like oh I just don't have that kind of attraction <laughs> um, because I'm eight <laughs> I also just thought it was a personality thing too, even yeah. outside of, um, I just, I especially like how I've been raised, I'm generally a pretty cautious person. So I just, I thought like, I'm just playing it safe. Most people aren't. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just more safe than most people because yeah, maybe someone looks, has, is good looking and uh, gets some type of emotional reaction out of me. But really what that was is I was just missing a dimension of what other people are experiencing. And if you experience just aesthetic attraction, you would have, feel no desire to like date them because that doesn't really make sense if that's all you're experiencing, to want to date someone purely based on that. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember knowing a lot um, like mechanically about how sex worked really early on, but I didn't understand sex related jokes that everyone was telling like in middle school like all that went over my head um and I was thought to be really innocent when I didn't think I was like I understood I think more of like how sex actually worked more than other people because of course my my sister is a little scientist was always a little scientist and like told me all about how <laughs> babies are born and all different um kinds of things in the world of sex um as it related to science obviously <laughs> and like um things i wish i didn't know <laughs> as early as i did but i did know that um but i didn't get like the jokes of like mine's bigger than yours and all those kind of things that like they obviously weren't saying the actual thing but they'd be like oh my, my whatever is bigger than yours. And I was like, yeah, I'd see that. Why do you, do you need to say that? And it was, it was a joke of like, how? <laughs> and like all those kind of things like went over my head because I was never thinking about sex ever. Um, and so when, when people brought the, up those jokes, they were like, oh, she's so innocent. <laughs> Yes, I've, I've gotten comments about how I'm innocent too. Yeah. And it's, uh, even if I got it, it just, it just didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Um, like playing cards against humanity, for example. Oh yeah. Like the sexual cards do really well. Uh, yeah, when everyone, I played. yeah. And like, I have no idea why. I don't see the humor in it. Um, I'm really good at cards against humanity because I can guess like what the person's humor is but I don't get their humor. <laughs> I just know, oh, that person likes when I play a sexual card. And so whenever it gets to that person, I'll play it. 
And I have no idea why it's funny, but they're like, this one wins. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. We love getting questions, so ask questions. <laughs> That's true. We'll answer. If you're confused about anything, we'll go back <laughs> over things. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and thank you guys for watching. Oh, uh, we got a nice group of people here. Um, hi, Alexa. Hi, Alyssa. Thank you guys for joining the live stream. Um, I'm here this week with Kevin. We're talking about asexuality and autism. Um, let's see what else can we cover. Um, the, oh, the struggles of being asexual. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a lot of them I thought were like growing up, just like, oh, it's autistic issues. And I think some of them still are, but I think that there is specific things. And there are actually times I feel like being asexual is, um, I think being asexual sometimes isolates me more than being autistic. And not always the case, but I think recently that's how I feel. And um, partially because, um, people I know are getting married and uh, we're kind of told like our entire lives that like marriage is like the ultimate goal um, or even that it's kind of superior to platonic relationships, which of course um, I'm asexual and aromantic doesn't make sense. So I remember like definitely, definitely growing up like, uh, like through high school and maybe early college, I felt like I was less worthy of love than people because I didn't experience these things. Like I hadn't, no one had like asked me out or anything. So just like, well, maybe I'm just not as important to people. And that was, and that was a big struggle I had uh, for quite a while. Um, I also feel like as far as the stability of my relationships, uh, I think that like if people have uh, kids or, and they get married, like um, are they going to still spend time with me? Because like ev pretty much everyone is under the belief that like, that is the main focus in life, like marriage and kids, like that's the ultimate goal and everything else is secondary. And that's, uh, from my perspective, a pretty scary place to be because, well, for me to have be married and have kids is probably even worse because I'm going against what's natural for me to do. So um, just feeling like, uh, like I don't know how long people are going to stick with me um, in far as like having good relationships and that's, it's a bit uncomfortable, especially because I'm in my 20s and this is a big deal to a lot of people and it's a huge focus. Well, I do remember um, in college I had to take this ethics class and we had a question about like, if um, someone cheated on you, would you take them back? And to me, like having not been in a relationship, I don't know how we would deal with um having sex and i definitely feel like i would not be able to meet the needs of a partner if they're not asexual obviously and i think i would be fine with them getting those needs met elsewhere and um so that's like a weird thing to think about too is like most people would consider that cheating where i because like i don't have like emotions around sex that I would be like well they need they have a need that I can't fulfill um and I know like that that's just it and even though like that's something that I I thought like a tiny bit about it's still like weird <laughs> I know that's not the norm and I know like most people I think would find that really strange um and so, like, it's just weird to think about, like, how a relationship would work being asexual um, and, like, if I would want that or not. Um, so, yeah, it gets, like, complicated and confusing. It seems like a lot of work that I don't want to put into something. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, like, your thought about, like, cheating. Like, yeah. um, it's not – I, I – I, 
had those thoughts too. Like people would like talk about like how it's really bad to do it. And like I, like you said, like if you don't experience emotions around it, like, yeah. it's, like it's not a big deal. So I know that like it's portrayed as being like the death of a relationship, but yeah. I don't understand that either. So for what it's worth, I have I mean, the same thoughts. I get it if like you've agreed to it. Like I, like broken promises definitely bother me. And so I'm like, oh, they made a deal and they broke that deal. Like that's what I used to think that's what it was. Oh yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they broke a promise. And they're like, they, <laughs> um, but like, I guess that there's, there's definitely, well, I know there's definitely more to that. Um, so yeah, like that's, that's all super confusing. Um, and there is that like fear that like, because I don't have that, uh, that if I end up like not wanting to ever have sex, then like, would I be good enough for somebody? Would they like rather have someone who, who give, who has all of the different parts? <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. I strongly relate like, to that. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, I don't know. There's like, so there, there's a lot of struggles with just like thinking about that, and then there's just like people just don't accept it. Um, and so like explaining I'm ace, and like most people's reaction is like without saying the words you're not, they like question it in a way of like you don't have it like well have you tried this or have you like done that or maybe you haven't met the right person um maybe you have a hormone imbalance <laughs> um all those kind of things too it is very often met with skepticism yeah. uh even i imagine that um before homosexuality became more accepted and integrated i imagine mm -hmm. it kind of went through the same type yeah. of things um and I think part of why it's valuable to educate is so like that stuff like that doesn't happen because yeah. if you were to tell someone you were straight, like no one would question it. Um, it's like, you're trying to just, all you're trying to do is like reveal something that's important to you. That's a big mm -hmm. part of your life. And it's like, if people just immediately question it, it's like, it feels like there's not empathetic listening there. And that uh, at the very least is uncomfortable and is sometimes even hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, so like I went to um, a college that was um, LGBTQ heavy and like I didn't feel like you, I feel like ACE is part of that um, not everyone agrees with that <laughs> but I still didn't like feel comfortable talking about it um, and so like it, it's just strange it just like feels so out of place and like how um like people just don't under understand it um i remember like people talking about how they like they came out and i've like never never officially like, came out i just like tell people as it's relevant because it's like not something i just feel i need to just come out about I guess <laughs> um so if it's like relevant to something we're talking about I might bring out I don't hide it or anything but um but like we were talking about like oh are you afraid like people um are gonna reject you and not be your friend like like I'm ace so like <laughs> I don't know I don't think so um so it's just a, a weird place to be that like it's hard for people to relate to, I guess. Yeah, and I think uh, also what maybe maybe it's hard to understand is I think that uh, almost any ace person wants, they want companionship, they want uh, like mm -hmm. long, like perhaps even lifelong type of companionship. Yeah. As much as anyone with the romantic drive. Yeah. It's just, it is platonic. And um, I think with the majority of people, those two things, like lifelong, uh, commitment and uh, and companionship and romance they all get mushed together that they're all like kind of the same thing mm -hmm. and uh, well in our case it's definitely not 
Um, but I think even even for people that um, that are that they have romantic drive, I think that mm. it's important to not uh, do that because they could be uh, there could be other relationships in their life that aren't romantic that perhaps they could be uh, underestimating or overlooking if they if they tie those things together too much. They are related. I think that, um, I don't fully understand this myself, but I imagine that romance does, uh, it can improve uh, long-term commitment and closeness in a relationship. I think that's probably very true, but um, it's not the main focus. It just enhances something that's bigger and more important. That romance itself is not like the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, it just enhances something that is really important. And um, I mean, kind of, kind of something that I believe in and want the world to uh, also believe in more is that that romance does not inherently make a relationship superior um, or marriage too. Like, it's just a label. The label by itself doesn't say much about the quality. Um, there are plenty of marriages that are really unhealthy and bad. Um, and people have like friendships that are like overall much more high quality and healthy. And I mean, it could go the other way around too. Like maybe the marriage is great and the friendships aren't like, but the point is looking beyond the labels and uh, seeing the importance of the relationship for what it is aside from just like, it's a marriage, so it's superior or it's a friendship. It's not as good as a marriage, things like that. Yeah. Um... I think asexuals make very good friends because we put a lot of effort. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I know I do. Um, and yeah, I like having friends um, and they're important to me. And um, I take care of my friends and I definitely appreciate it when they return that um, effort. Um, but yeah, I found that like I've lost quite a few friends um, when they get into relationship. They either change or they, for that person, or they put all their time and energy into that, and they abandon friendships um, or put less energy into their friendship. And that's just something that I'll never understand, and is always very heartbreaking. Um, where. Friendships are super important to me. Yeah, and that's, um, I think that, that we're pretty much talking about the same thing. Like when yeah. I'm talking about like a lack of stability, that's kind yeah. of, that's exactly what I mean. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to believe that uh, even without a romantic relationship, that ace people can uh, be as important to someone, uh, mm -hmm. as important to someone as like a marriage partner would. And, um, I think a big part of marriage is kind of like the vow that like you'll stay together forever and like that that maybe sometimes it doesn't feel good and that there's be difficulty in in the marriage but the fact that they stick together because they've made that vow to each other and I think that that type of thing is very special and um, as an ace person I still think yeah that that sounds great um, I just think that you can you can you can make that commitment to someone without marriage, and um, this is something I still am figuring out how possible it is. I think it is, but um, to me, the most uh, for committing, I think, kind of actions speak louder than words here, and um, that if someone is important uh, or. Or if you're important to someone, they will make time for you, um, regardless of how much is going on in their life. And kind of that, I think that people will stay, if like, if the relationship is truly special, I want to believe that people, even if it's not a romantic relationship, will stay together just through their own volition. And I think that that's really important, uh, that it's through their own volition. Um, I have an example for this. So... This is something uh, just actually happened. I heard about this. So there was um, there was a wife who did not 
did not work. Um, so she was financially dependent on her husband. And, and her husband uh, was emotionally neglected, uh, neglected her, um, just didn't treat her well, um, and eventually cheated, which, as we explained, has bigger emotional consequences. And because she was financially dependent on him, she felt like she had to stay. So she was kind of stuck in this unhealthy situation because uh, she lacks the volition in the scenario. So I think people staying together not because they're forced to, but because they choose to, because it's just like, this relationship is good for my emotional health, so I want to stay there. And I think that's really important. And I'm bringing this up because um, I think uh, ace relationships uh, can really capitalize on that type of value because uh, maybe you aren't making a marriage vow, but like if people are important, if you're important to someone and they're important to you, like you'll just stick together. And just like the quality of your relationship and your volition is what keeps it together. And to me, that is like the type of relationship I would want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree that like, there is having someone um, that's important to you, whether that's like um, a friend or like um, a romantic partner, like the ace side of things, whether you like are ace or like also have romance, like that um, insects, like that that side of things is really important like and we like that's all we have so like that communication is super um important to us and so like having that kind of healthy relationship everyone should work on that and learn from the ace community about it yeah <laughs> yeah really it's, it shouldn't just be an ace community thing it should be every, an everyone thing yeah and i think i think there are plenty of people that are doing that but I think that type of message because, uh, yeah, our society is probably unhealthily obsessed with romance. I think um, I'm really biased here, so I'm not, I'm by no means an authority on this, but I am of the belief that the more that companionship isn't said to be the same thing as romance, the better. Because mm -hmm. I think it's uh, overall more accurate and bigger picture type of perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, so Osplank says, can you be a romantic but not asexual? Um, I think probably. I, I haven't heard of anyone like that, but I think that should be very possible. Um, I'm guessing they don't know that they are. Um, they probably think that their sex drive is the same as romance. <laughs> um, if they exist. <laughs> I'm guessing that's why they um, wouldn't come out as saying that. Because um, again, we like assumed what we're the same as everyone else. So like that would be probably, that'd be my answer to that question. <laughs> well, I imagine they would also, um... Let's there would probably be a, a bit of a negative sti uh, stigma against yeah. that type of thing because it would be like someone who sleeps around a lot and doesn't right. commit to anyone. Right. Um, I guess that's not necessarily true either, but I think that would be the stereotype. Yeah. Of it. Yeah, that would be interesting. So maybe they, like, and it would be sad if they don't know and they're like trying to be in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, there's also, there's, um, there's even like YouTube videos of ace people trying to get into romantic relationships before they know about it. Like, yeah. The struggles of that. So there's definitely more material you're interested in hearing about that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So why is this relevant to people? all orientation. I think we went over that somewhat. Yeah, we yeah. did. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we covered most things. Um, oh, um, 
something that um, I um, thought was just like a, a personal thing it was like real romance kind of plots, especially as a writer, always bored me. And I was like, maybe I just don't like writing those things. And I found out that that's a common trait of being ace is like romance um, and sexual plots uh, just aren't interesting because we don't have those excited feelings when, when watching it or obviously when I'm writing about it. Um, so like I remember like writing a, um, a story and I've had characters in relationships and I had to write about them being in a relationship and I found this, like I didn't like the scene at all, but like I, so I like didn't understand why I hated it and I kept going over it. Like, what do I need to fix? What's wrong with it? And then I finally asked my sister and she's like, well, it's cause it's romance and you don't like romance, but you wrote a really great cheese ball scene. <laughs> That's actually um, kind of like exactly what you're saying about the yeah. Christmas humanity. That's yeah. like, you know that people will like this, but you personally don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot, there's a lot of romantic stories where like the payoff is like, there's all this tension and then they finally get together. And like, that's supposed to be like the scene where everyone says da or something like yeah. that. But like, I never got that. Um, to me, it actually seemed really unhealthy and, seemed to like yeah. promote unhealthy values because like it looks like the relationship was just like not healthy yeah and like i'm supposed to celebrate them getting together even though it's not healthy and i was just super confused by that um yeah i, I like i remember like reading books like i loved adventure books and like monster books and like at the end everyone would end up as a couple and I was like this is not what the book's about and I would always like hate these kind of endings where everyone like ended up perfectly happy in a couple or in a family or whatever and I was like I don't like that and I liked books with like weird endings and sad endings and like um because like there was no payoff for when like you know couples got together for me um yeah, I remember that being really frustrating. <laughs> and I, I actually read, um, I read the, if you're familiar with the Five Love Languages book. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and I read the singles edition. And this is kind of, I remember feeling uncomfortable about, I'm, a lot of the book I really liked. But I remember that what I felt uncomfortable about and it uh, was that the way that marriage was portrayed was like supposed to be the ultimate goal. Um, even like in a book that was dedicated towards single people. So like, I know that uh, the author is from a religious background, so that could explain that. But um, I think we're kind of, uh, we're fed that message for our entire life that like, this is what is the most important to people. And uh, I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but maybe to elaborate on it more, um, I think one of the difficulties is finding other people that have like this, that value non-romantic relationships like mm -hmm. as much as we do because yeah. uh that's what we want and a lot of people are really into romantic relationships so um i i think it's very possible for any ace people out there listening uh hopefully it's encouraging to hear that there are people that have these views and hopefully you can relate to them too and uh it's really just finding the right people which is really hard uh i know that from experience I, I think you're like you're the second ace person I've met ever, so not not a lot of us out there. Um, yes, um, very rare. <laughs> um, but if you're ace, um, or if you're just finding out you're ace, like you can, um, message me and we can talk. Um. Love to, to find more of us and um, have someone that relates. It's always nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, hi, Crystal. Thanks for joining. I don't know if I want to answer this question, Alex. 
<laughs> I'm yeah, I'm not sure I know enough about this to answer this question. Um But thank you for asking questions. <laughs> yeah, please, please continue. <laughs> um, yeah, if we have any uh, final questions, please leave them because we're getting down to the end of the hour. And thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope this was helpful, um, learning about asexuality and autism and um, a whole new topic. <laughs> Um, what am I doing next week? Uh, Danny Rady is going to be on next week because I do these talks every Wednesday at 7 Pacific Standard Time. So Danny Rady, founder of Asperger Experts, is going to come on. Um, and he's always interesting. <laughs> we'll talk about um, We'll probably talk about our workshop, what we wish our parents did differently, and um, some other topic that we haven't chosen yet. Or maybe we'll just... Have a discussion. <laughs> um, yeah, so come back next week for that and register at artism.com for all of our upcoming events. We have um, all our support groups, our social groups, and we have a viewing party for Everything's Gonna Be Okay, and we have a workshop coming up. So sign up for all those things. Um, yeah. We have some final questions. Alex asks, can you become ace later in life after not being ace for some time? I, um, I don't believe so. Um, I mean, I'm sure something could go wrong with your body and you lose your libido or like, <laughs> And then you maybe that makes you ace later. Like I don't, <laughs> I I don't know how medically that works. Um, that would be my guess why it happens later in life. It's um, also um, there is like there is something called like uh, gray asexuality or like gray oh, yeah. romanticism. So it could be that uh, someone who is in that area is kind of in between labels because really it is it is um it's not like a yes or no black or white type of yeah thing. so um, like there could just be in different phases of that yeah there's a it's a spectrum of um either feeling less sexual or not feeling sexual at all so like I, there's people who experience sexual attraction to um only a certain amount of time so like they do get for me and they do get all those kind of feelings and there's people who are only attracted to like certain people or to someone they know for a long time so there's like a lot of very specifics to a person who's ace that maybe they um they're experiencing it for a little while um or not experiencing something so that would be like very personal to case by case. Um, but I wouldn't say like you become ace later in life. I would assume you were always ace and just to know it. Yeah, because a lot of it is self discovery. I yeah. think that um, I learned about it two years ago, like pretty recently. So um, like I didn't even know it existed. So. Just, I also think that just the lack of knowledge about asexuality makes it harder for people to realize that they are mm -hmm. that orientation. Mm -hmm. um, Justin asked, would you do a video about autism and driving? Um, I don't drive, so I don't know if I'm the right person to do that. I could talk about all the reasons I don't drive and don't think I ever will. Um, but, um, but I don't know if that would take up an hour um, <laughs> or it would be that interesting. Um, but yeah, we can definitely talk about driving. Um, I could maybe do a blog about it or something if you wanted more information about, about that topic. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I know of anyone who's like, who 
somehow related to autism and driving <laughs> that I could bring on an interview. Um, but I do have some cool topics coming up about, um, I'm going to be planning one about um, the workplace and how, having autism and dealing with a tr traditional job and applying for jobs and all that kind of thing. Um, so maybe we'll bring up driving as in like getting to work in that. Um, yeah, I have that planned for the future. Um, but yeah, I don't have a video planned for just driving in general. Um, but I just, I don't think everyone has to drive. So that would be me answering that question. <laughs> um, that's something that like, a lot of people think you need a, a license, especially in, um, LA where I live, but I don't think you, I don't think you do. Um, interview an autistic who drives a limousine. I, I don't know one that does specifically that or race car driver. Um, yeah, that would be cool if I knew of someone uh, who is a race car driver and autistic. That would be super cool. <laughs> I would definitely want to interview them. If you know someone, like send them my way and I will bring them on immediately. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do know, um, I do have friends on the spectrum who love driving. I have friends on the spectrum who hate driving. I have friends who will never drive just like me. So like, it's, it's up to you and like what you're comfortable with and what your skill set is. So I don't think you need to drive. If you like to drive, that's awesome. <laughs> um, probably makes life a little bit more convenient. <laughs> um, the one thing I do like, um, cause I Uber most places is that I don't have to deal with parking. <laughs> Um, but also I've had to wait 30 minutes for an Uber, so there's the pros and cons to everything. Um, and then the bus is a whole other system of sensory stuff, so a cool question. <laughs> um, there's an autistic race car driver in Canada. Cool. I support them. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, any final questions, please leave them. We only have a couple minutes left. Do you have any parting words or advice for everybody before we sign off? Oh, parting advice. <laughs> well, that, uh, I guess I could give advice, but I'd also need to know what I'm doing. Um, so a lot of like what I'm talking about, like I'm, I'm still going through it myself. Like I'm, yeah. I'm struggling through it. I don't have the answers. Um, uh, hopefully it was more to just like, um, maybe get people to relate to what I'm saying. Uh, just get the message out there. I think yeah. that's the most I can do. I yeah, I'm far from being uh, someone who like knows how to deal with these issues. I'm working through them every day. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to say that this these are our stories and our opinions. And if you agree or disagree, that both are cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not experts in asexuality, and we're like, this is what it is, and this is what it's not. Um, but yeah, this is these are our experiences, and hopefully, it helps you guys um, in some way. Um, but what I am an expert in is autism, and I have a workshop all about what that is <laughs> coming up um, in about parenting autism um, and a lot of cool stuff about autism. So go sign up for those workshops. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you for listening to our live stream. Um, stay colorful, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.